2014 North Andover Board of Health. Our meeting is now called to order and we're open. It is 7.06. Our first order of agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could all please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since we have several um, parties here before us, we'll do a little bit of a shift in the agenda. Um, so is there anybody here from Lyman Road that we need to? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. they're right here. So why, on, on our agenda, the old business, 98 Lyman Road, there's an update. So Susan, you want to start with that? Um, actually, I think I'll defer to Deborah so she can give us an, an update. She was at the location today okay. at the house. Um, yeah, the, um, there was a, a dumpster dropped last week and um, it was filled. Um, there's a new dumpster there now. Uh, I guess what came out of there was, was from the basement. So the, up, the uh, main house is still pretty you know, cluttered, but um, there's another dumpster there, and from what I understand, they're gonna work on it this weekend. So that's progress. Um, there is heat in the house. Um, you know, it, Nancy keeps it pretty chilly, but it's, it's <laughs> to be conservative, but that's all right. Um, it's, um, it's working. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, I feel that um, everybody's working towards, um, you know, the house being sold and uh, um, finding, you know, Nancy and her son finding housing. And so it's, um, uh, you know, the only thing is there's not a shower, but there is running water, there is, you know, toilets, there is heat. So what I would recommend at this point is to just give us some more time in order to find housing um, for um, the people that are living there now, and we will continue to work with the family towards um, you know, getting it into a saleable condition. And I will continue to uh, work with them, and hopefully um, you know, we'll find housing soon, and it'll be able to go for sale, and she is the... Um, owner is going to remain at Wingate um, until such time. And she's so hoping. Our initial that order had a, a deadline set. Uh, on. Oh, I'm sorry. So we yeah. had um, given them till today. It was deemed uninhabitable, um, and then they wanted time to do these items, address the heat, address water, you know, address the the clutter issues, and then they were to come back here and kind of give a, the update, update. So, mm -hmm. so it has happened um, to a certain extent and especially heat is the number one. We didn't want anyone living there in any longer. A little cold lately. It's a little yeah. cold and um, so the uninhabitable part, I mean it actually is habitable at this point but it still has issues, unsanitary conditions. Right. So, um, is there hazardous material still around, uh, around the home? I Fire would, hazard, uh, well, the bathroom has not been cleaned and um, that's, you know, uh, uh, you know, that, that needs to be cleaned, like, appropriately because um, there were some uh, issues. Change. Yeah, there were some <laughs> issues. You know, I, I don't want to go into the person's medical mm -hmm. history, but you would want to handle the bathroom with care. Um, so that, but I wouldn't say that there's any, ha you know, other than that, I would not say there's any hazard. Around the house? No. Or is the only hazard area? The bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, there was no hazards. What was preventing it from being cleaned within the last 30 days? Do you know? Um, well, it has been, they did fill one dumpster. I, I believe so, the dumpster came last no, I mean the weekend. Bathroom. Oh, the bathroom. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not sure anybody knows exactly how to clean it um, with what, you know. Do you think uh, they need to hire a company or? I don't know. You know Do you think, yeah, probably. I mean, it's strategy. probably, you know, it, it's health-wise, it's concerning. You wouldn't want to, uh, I, I, I don't want to. No debris. No. Just no. And the woman does, you know, it, there was. Is, that, is there a clean bathroom, bathroom that they can yes. use? Yes, there is a clean bathroom. Oh, yeah, okay. so that one's okay. just shut for right now. 
it, oh. nobody goes in there, and, and okay. it, rightfully so. I mean, I guess if you you know you don't want to expose yourself to something that you don't have to. No, I was concerned about that. Yeah. As you recall. Yeah. yeah. So there is another bathroom, so the door is just closed to that, and mm -hmm. I guess it depends on what's going to happen to the house. You know, um, at this point, the door is just closed. That's sort of the least of the problems right now. As long as they have a bathroom that they can use that's clean, which mm -hmm. they do. Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when, when it, yeah. we come to it. You know, if when the house goes up for sale or whatever. But at this point, it, it's, you know, we'll there is elder. there is a clean bathroom. Right. And the elder is safely somewhere else. Somewhere else, so she's yeah. Not, and there's no intention to bring her home at this no. point still. No. Which was our one of our major concerns. How is the post involved in helping with the? Uh, um, Just in well, general. I'll let Rob speak on that. He he did drop the. You did you drop the dumpster, right? right? And Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Uh, we did drop the dumpster last weekend, uh, and the family did go through and clean up the basement. We do have another dumpster in place that was dropped on Monday uh, for another 20 yards of, of debris to be removed from the property this weekend. Uh, my main concern with the property and everything that's going on with it would be the plumbing. Uh, and we wouldn't be able to address that until uh, December uh, and fix the showers and the, the property uh, uh, for the uh, habitants and, and get that up to code. Mm -hmm. You can call me. Uh, Bob Turner, VFW North Andover. Uh, what I've also been told is that uh, the heat has been repaired. There was problems as far as it's uh, pipes going into the chimney and there was problems with the boiler and this has now been repaired and they've also uh, received uh, a full tank of oil also. Uh, and that's basically depleted our funds for the month. Right. So did, did uh, Mariana didn't pay for that? Oh no, she did. She, right. And it's, and it's she did pay her, for it. That's okay. correct. Right. It depleted her funds. It so now we have okay. to wait until she gets paid again on the first. Okay. Uh, to bring in uh, a, a a plumber to actually address the issue with the showers. Okay, so she is paying for this. That's correct. That's correct. So you're more facilitating That's all correct. the different things avenues of what has to be done uh, right. from your from your paperwork that we've received. Right. right. Um, okay. What needs to be done to the property? Okay. So the last of, the last time we were here, you gave us 30 days. We're kind of like a little behind schedule like, as far as we thought. There was a lot more involved than we had anticipated. Yes. Right. Um, so. Well, if the house <coughs> is going to go up for sale, um, well, that's that's in the future as far as all that discussion oh, all right. is concerned, okay. too. Yes. So right now yeah. you do want to fix the shower? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh sure. Okay. Sure. Right. Make it habitable. We want to definitely take care of the deficiencies that are on that list. Okay. All right, but we just need a little more time. Okay, that sounds good. Well, so let's get to that. Our really our primary question here is we're making progress, but the yes. initial timeline isn't. It was an, wasn't anticipated as right. much as we had so to. So is there a priority list at this point that we can get them out of um, out of violation of our order so that they can then be released? Or sort of where are we? I mean, if we're asking for an extension, do you or? Yeah, Nancy. Um, I, I I'd rather not just pick a, a number out of the year, a date out of the oh, year, and then okay. have to have you come back okay. in a, three weeks or something again. Well, understand this too. Uh, we're going to make, uh, we're going to have to do what we do to in order then to sell a home, first of all, mm -hmm. before it gets foreclosed on. So, and I'm, from what I understand, there was some considerable sums of money that are owed back taxes on this home. So, we're just getting it updated to where it, you people will say, okay, mm -hmm. everything's fine enough so we can just go ahead and do what we have to do. Um, why don't, well, okay, how about this? How about, um, you have another dumpster there. Yes. How about? Like, I can come in, you know, after, see what's been done. I mean, I think the only other, you know, uh, major thing other than cleaning out um, is the shower, you know. So, I mean, I think that we could keep on top of that. Um, just like we do any. Just like we do any housing, housing right. issue. Right, as you have been. We right. could go back on either right. weekly. Or yeah, or I mean, I'll be in touch. Anyway, okay. I talk to um, Nancy and Nancy all the time okay. anyway so I think we could be in touch and just uh, 
you know, as long as we're making progress and nobody's put out on the street and nobody's freezing and that's the major concern. And the main for concern is, you know, right. for her to end up selling the house for, so she can get housing, so the daughter can get housing, so we sure. can all work together because we don't want to, we don't want to put anybody out. We don't want to. Uh, we just want the best outcome for everybody. So oh, as long totally. as we can just Absolutely. work Absolutely. together and, um, you know. Um, I, I think every, we're working. We're headed in the right direction. I think everybody's making good progress. Great. It's. What do you need so, from What do you need yeah. from the board? What are you asking for? I'm asking I mean, for. I'm asking. I'm asking for the. No, I'm asking for the order. I, I think that I would be asking for the order to be lifted, and for you to give authority to Sue, um, to her discretion. Uh, just for us to handle this like we handle a housing case. Right. Um, when you say order to be lifted, I'm I'm thinking more of just the in, un unha right. inhabitable part. Yeah, that's it's the inhabitable part. Certainly still a sanitary code issues that we will check off as we go. Right. right. Um, as we do with other so ones. The order provided the conditions yeah. for this stuff to get done, so yeah. we want to be careful about what we're doing. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to ask again. So mm -hmm. what are you asking us to do so that you can finish your job? Word it wrong. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm to, asking to you for the, to de, um, to deem it habitable, and for us right. to follow the sanitary conditions. Um, Is it ha currently habitable with the current sanitary conditions that you told me about? Oh, many homes are habitable that have unsanitary yes. conditions. This right. just okay. lo lofted to the uninhabitable because of the water and the heat. So now that the the heat Heat's is on. restored and the ability we'll to, you know, wash, maybe not through a shower, but it's almost, you know, still um, it's still an ability to wash. So still those sinks and toilets. primary human needs are met. So since those major two items to lift the condition of it being uninhabitable, and then we'll handle the sanitary conditions under a regular order of the Board of Health, not, not an unsanitary home that we have to ask someone to board up or clothes or anything so so it's just to just that just to lift the condition that, that it's uninhabitable I mean if if down the line that everybody just throws in the towel and stops working then I, I'll know about it and so yeah. you know I, I, I won't let I don't that think happen. you'd have to worry about that with us on board no, I'm not I'm not worried about it but I'm just okay. saying that if something like that happened and you know we've come back but I, I feel like we're working in the right I feel like we're making progress, so I'm asking for you to lift the. So the initial the impetus was the fact that you deemed it uninhabitable. So that's right. been that's what in we essence needed solved to do that. now. Right. So we can lift that, but that. there's still, san but there's still sanitary right. inspections that will continue. Absolutely. That you will stay on top of that yeah. may or may not have to come back to the board, True. but in terms of a they required should. attendance, say right the next now, meeting, yeah. we can lift that at this moment. Right. That's great. Is that yeah, so, so, so why don't we resolve to reverse our finding at the October meeting on inhabitability of the premises and move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's second. Great. That's what we're requesting. Thank you. Thank All you in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much for your help. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. We Thanks, appreciate Daddy, your help. Nice to see you. Thank you guys. Okay, I'm probably going to leave and take them home. Yes. Okay. You'll see. Are you leaving? She's going to leave. Oh, let me give you this. <coughs> okay. Think of this so far. What is that? There's still a few packet needles in here. Mm -hmm. All the filled out forms and some blanks. Are. Yeah. Okay, we have um, some new business items now. I'm just going to go in order here. We have an A, B, C, and a D. So we're going to start with 143 Lacey Street, which is a request for out-of-season subsurface disposal installation to occur after de December 30th, depending on the weather. So, right. Susan, I'll let you start with that one. The North Andover uh, subsurface disposal regulations um, Note that septic system installation season is from March 1st to October, I mean, November 30th. Um, last permit given out on November 15th. So, anyone who um, can't meet that deadline, if it is a repair, 
um, in the past, um, depending on whether we granted an extension to that. Um, new construction, we don't do that. Um, and the reason being is out of season installation has, you know, it lends itself to not uh, the best septic system being installed if we happen to have snow and the excavation, um, the snow is mixed with the sand or the dirt around, you could end up with depressions in the spring. Um, the stone is never as clean as you would want it to be. Um, there's just different, different things that can go wrong that tend to, bad weather tend to, to lend itself to. So. Um, there were two uh, this year, uh, both um, are here, 143 Lacey Street and 51 Haymeadow, 143 Lacey Street. The owners are here um, in the back, the O'Mahonies, and the installer, uh, Rob Daigle, is also here. Um, so, Rob, if you could you come up and um, just want to ask you if you think that you will be able to get the system in, um, what's your schedule and timeline um, so far? Yes, I started working that up. Mm -hmm. Already, I had my first inspection this morning and I'm gonna follow that with 143 Lacey Street. Okay. So the tank, the new tank went in today. Mm -hmm. um, and the, in the plumbing, uh, we discussed this earlier, yep. the plumbing, is Plum there a plumber Plumbing's plumber gonna pull yet? a permit Monday. Monday, mm -hmm. okay. So, and then, because this is one of those systems where the, the old system is, part of it's in the area of the new system. We try not to do that, but there really wasn't any room. <laughs> so they, um, you know, there's actually, no, that's the other one. I'm sorry, I'm on the same one. That's 51. Yeah, they're both okay, kind of. that's the right one. Both, and then the other one is also in the same one. They're both tricky they're situations. They're both tricky systems, yeah. and it's unfortunate that they're, you know, being done at this time. Um, we do impress upon people to get them done as, early as possible it, for our own <laughs> for us too it's cold out there and it's um it can get really bad weather wise um in the past we've had see some systems that literally were open all winter and that's why we made this rule because we don't want the homeowners you know in the systems to suffer this particular system of the one the the couple in the back is less than 20 years old and that failed and i don't want to see that happen to them again so um and this is late because why is <clears throat> why is the uh, approval approval process? I uh, pulled the permits as soon as I possibly could. It was just the way that it happened. Um, I think it was the last day that I could pull the permit that mm -hmm. I did pull the permit, right. and I am uh, you know I'm going to be assertive on getting them done. I know we're getting a little bit of a warm up next week, so hopefully we can mm -hmm. you know push the procedure along. Okay. Well, Susan, what weather conditions, what kind of weather conditions might occur that would make it not possible to do the installation? Is it a cold weather freezing thing or just a lot of snow or what would say you have to stop the installation? Primarily if, if you have precipitation, you know, whether it be rain, um, you know, could create a mud situation if you happen to have a, uh, a warm time or if it's snow, you can create problems you know during the installation and then even into the spring um, because of the freeze thaw if they if they mix together and then you get depressions and then the system will not mm -hmm. flow properly because the pipes are laid a certain you know to to flow um, at a certain pitch and if everything settles or something then everything could just not work properly so it's our preference to not have this happen as much as possible um, the weather is so fickle around here, though, so, so um, sometimes this could happen earlier in the season, too, and we wish, you know, that um, this warm-up should help at least this week, but unfortunately, too, this time sure. is Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, the, the holiday time, it's hard to get well, all the professionals there. You, in there. You, so. you just said yeah. warm-up, but I asked yeah. you what would stop mm -hmm. things. You said precipitation, mm -hmm. so right. the fact that it's cold, does that stop him from doing the installation, or...? No. I mean, I know I'd, ra I'd rather not be out doing it right. in 25 degrees either, but is that... Um, no, that's why we allow this. We do allow out-of-season installation, but we don't do it for new construction because there's no excuse to not getting it done during the regular season. You know, this is for people, and this, these people have failed systems, and they need to get done. So, so. typically allowed? Is there any criteria we're supposed to assess as to This is the criteria. Just this is 
this is it. This is the fact that you're allowing it per, you know, depending on weather, to get, allowing it out of season. But do we have any yeah. precedent we as to, yeah. you know, why you've done it or haven't done it in the past? Or, I mean, just to my knowledge, this is the we first use, time we've heard this since I've been on the board. So prior sure to, um, to the, the way the regulation was before, it was just dependent on weather. And that's when we had problems because everyone would say, oh, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. And all of a sudden, there's two feet of snow. So then the people have systems that aren't covered properly um, and, you know, could freeze because they don't have the proper cover or those types of things. So we decided we didn't want that to happen. So we set this date and we let everyone know. I mean, I contact anyone who has a system that I know is coming up and I say, it, it's almost time. You got to get it done. We can't have these systems going in late. It's just not, we're not going to do that. Um, and these are the two that are right on the edge. So um, that's why I told them to come here because I don't want it to be a common thing that this happens. Do you have a recommendation? I, I, I recommend that we continue and we do get these systems in, but I really, you know, stress that we follow the plans, you know, the, the way that are approved, um, that we work with the inspectors, myself and Michelle, as best as possible. We try to respond as quickly as possible. We give usually a 24-hour, um, if maybe 48-hour response, which is uh, I consider extremely good. Um, we get criticized by not coming out the same day, and I think that's a little unreasonable sometimes. But you know, we really need installers to work with us and to do their best and to commit to um, providing the best system for our homeowners. They deserve it. They're paying extremely good money for the services. And putting in the best system is our, is our goal. So we want the commitment from our installers. So. Is there a situation where you would issue a stop work order? Um, I haven't had a situation like that. It's just happened, and it's been disappointing that you know you can't get the installer to finish properly, or to follow the rules, or you know it's it's very simple. We work really hard to have a plan that is has everything on it that they need, and if the more that we have to go back out and we inspect, um, you know, the longer it takes, but we just we need cooperation from our installers. So, so this is critical where they have to follow the plan, mm -hmm. have extremely high quality of work, excavate, excavate appropriately where, per plan, mm -hmm. use stone per plan, and get it done in a, in a, uh, as quick as possible but accurate. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. How long will it take to uh, get the system done? Let's say you have good weather now. <coughs> yeah. uh, 51 hay meadow is going to take about a week. It's kind of interesting. Lacey Street will take a little less. And I've already started in Hay Meadow. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. I was just because you don't have any concerns with Mr. Dale's ability to uh, conclude this. Schedule. I wanted him to come here personally and address the board to reassure so you. that he could reassure you that he would follow the plan, that he would work with myself and, and Michelle and our outside consultants to get it done. Um, and that's why I wanted him here. But he's, so, he's you know, known to you and has a track record of... This year, I think you've put in, uh, this five is probably five systems. or six. Mm -hmm. um, they've been, some of them have been difficult. Um, What's you've, been difficult? A um, couple of times we've had to go out for additional inspections when the excavation maybe wasn't right to the to right depth. Um, Excuse me, what or, was that in re reference to? Or the one on summer, we had to go out because the, the, the um, cover wasn't, brought to grade, and I know your homeowner was very upset with me about mm. that, and I, I don't know um, why that, but there's a requirement that you bring a cover to grade. Um, but, you know, I think it's just important that we work together, and the homeowner has to understand we're out there just observing. We're really not trying to tell someone exactly how to do it. We want to check off the boxes and get to the next inspection as quickly as possible, and we want, you know, we just want a good high-quality work. So if the weather changes, yeah. what's the worst? What's what can happen? Let's say everything freezes the, and that's it. It's the, the snow and the ice. It, yeah, the snow mixed in with the, you know, with, so you, with you the material. That would. 
stop you it. You can. You just have to be very careful with it because if you mix it, so if you take off the the material and you you put it on once, if it gets mixed with snow, you can't use that. You've got to bring in some good material so that you don't have that. So it, it just takes. It just it, you, it can be done. It's, so but we're not having grading. snow right now, so we don't have to. They can worry do the grading. About. They're not going to do the seeding until the spring. Right. That will. I will ask both the homeowners. We ask them to write me a note, a uh, letter that says that um, the seeding. They understand that we are signing off, even though the seeding may not isn't going to be done. It's not a requirement necessarily by Title V to seed, but I feel it's. It's the most common thing that the person doesn't get done, but yet they've paid for it. So we get the homeowner to say, yes, it's okay for you to sign off so that we have something so they understand that they are allowing. Because otherwise, I'd have to hold the certificate of compliance until next year, which actually, in this case, there's not a sale involved. Usually, if there's a sale involved, it's a problem. But in this case, there's not a sale involved. So, so if you hold so the certificate of of compliance, does that mean that they can't flush their toilet? No, but, well, I would never do that, but no, we would never stop someone from flushing a toilet. Um, so basically, yeah. you're holding a certificate of compliance is basically saying that it's not signed still off. something to be done. It's a legal yeah. document. Yeah. Okay. By code, I could, I mean, literally, it says you shouldn't use it, but I would never stop someone from flushing a toilet. I would never, never do that. That's so not appropriate. But to my question yeah. before, Rob, when you started, you said you're expecting it to warm up next week. Do you say that because when it's warmer, you can work faster, you can do a better job? No, it's job, just going to allow our window of work to be that much longer. So I'm, I'm not expecting this to go past December 30th, either, either septic system. You mean November 30th? No, December 30th December is 30th. the shutoff, correct? November 30th. But this is to... Extended right. past December 30th. Am I wrong? Well, I didn't say how long. I didn't. You said I December thought you. 30th. No, I don't think I've ever said the word December. Um, in after I, I know you're November. So you said it would take a week or so to put them in. So I'm assuming. I guess I was assuming. I, I should have asked. So you're actually thinking it's going to go out to Christmas? No. No. Okay. Good. Great. That's all. I may be mistaken. Yeah, yeah. That's I thought that you our, said. Our notice says mm -hmm. December 30th. Yeah. yeah, it says December 30th. Oh, it should say November 30th. Well, it says December. December 30th. That's supposed to be November. The code is November. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I apologize. It should say November. I don't know. That's well, not we've code. we've corrected that now. It's That's November 30th. Yeah. Have you, so have you he's saying in, it's only going to be a week weather or like two. this if it so. uh, comes close to freezing? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have. And, and, and just what, uh, if it doesn't go as planned, what's our remedy? It will. <laughs> it, it's got to get done. It will, it will yeah. be done. It will, it will be, be done. done right. You it have will, my word. You right. still inspect it? Yes, done. it will it's be done. done. Nothing changes about the inspection right. process. So either it's done right and it passes right. or it's done wrong and you fix right. it. We just want this to be unique and not irregular, and that's why we want to do it this way so it doesn't happen that we we only have two at least we don't have four or six it just makes it hard for us as we you know every season has its hard points and this the end of a season for septic is the hardest season everybody's putting them in all at once is there any reason that we can't take these two properties at the same time they he is doing both at the same time, uh -huh. he's going to be jumping from one to the other. He has two crews, I think, or two set, two yeah, excavators. Going, he's asking the same thing on both. Yes. So, uh, oh yes, you can take a, both items at the same of time. Just us disposing of. Correct. This. Yes. I want to ask a responsibility question. Yes. Sort of thinking, and I have no way to, to judge him specifically, but I think we have a responsibility to think of a worst case scenario. And you said one of the reasons why we don't like to have them install in cold weather is because of freeze and thaw and the potential for the pitch of the pipes and so on to change. If, if I think worst case scenario, and in the process while he's doing the installation over the next several weeks, you know, it's pretty early for it to be 23 degrees already. If things change like that and there is some change such that because of that, the system doesn't work properly and that's determined next spring, next summer, two years from now, who bears the responsibility for that? By us allowing this to happen, 
is that putting onus on us, or is it still the onus between him yeah. and the homeowner? I think I think I the think guarantees are between the installer. Um, the uh, town is never liable. Like I said, we're more of a we're the observers, and we write what we see. If we were to observe that there was snow mixed in, you know, or something, we would document that. Um, we've had other installers have to go back and redo you know because the homeowner would call them in the spring and say you need to come back well, it was not mr dago it was somebody else so we've had that happen and that's that's what they do they go back and fix their work if there's a problem and i'm sure that i would assume there's a contract between them uh, for a certain period of time maybe depending on what the work is i don't know what their contracts are i know it's not forever but um if there's a problem they're going to call Mr. Daigle, they're these, not going to These call are us. out of these are uh, these are um, out of compliance right now, and they're both occupied. Neither one is for sale. Correct. All right. Well, very simply, I am going to move that we approve the request for an out-of-season subsurface disposal installation to occur after November 30th, dependent on weather. Thank you for both properties. For correction on that. Thank you very much. Okay. Could, yeah. could I suggest that we do it separately because there, there oh, needs to be something go to each property. I understand I would make two motions, one for each address, so that there can be, th these are kind of separate issues. It just happens he's the same installer, mm -hmm. but I think we could we should separate Save them toy. because different homeowners, the different owners of what's going on here. The, you're the Lacey okay. Street owners. Yeah. They're here, but the people from um, Hay Meadow or not, I think we should do two votes. I think and then I'll, yeah, when I write the variance, it'll be to that one. The variance will be to the other, yeah. so they both know they have that. So, so. can you uh, change my uh, motion to be for uh, specifically 143 Lacey Street? And, and is it after November 30th and before X date, or can he now just do it? Yeah, do we months? put, I mean, I, he's I, assuring, I just, but. He's assuring. Well, no, yeah, it's, I mean, it's yeah. in there it really does, on It's weather. just dependent on weather. It's, it's not on a date. Weather. So I don't think yeah. putting in a, in a date, we have an no. unusually warm December. But you could do it in January, then. Well, I mean, it's, it's in not failure. Gonna, it's not going to go that long. <laughs> it's in failure. Yeah. So I, I think it just needs to get done. He'll be done. closed for the season. I'm so I, I think, we've, I think we've, we've held everybody's feet to the fire. Why don't we just get this disposed of? Thank you. Check. Thank you. Second. And then. And then I'm going to make the same. All in favor for uh, Lacey Street? Aye. Aye. Can okay. I make the same motion on 51 Hay Meadow? Second. Okay. Same bolt. Same Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen, Aye. ladies. Thank, Thank you. You all start with me? Yes, sir. Have a good day. Thanks Unless you much. want to talk about Sharpner's Pond Road, I don't know. No. <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> well, you might want to talk to them first. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a Thank lot. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Good night. Uh, item C under new business 712 and 724, Sharpner's Pond Road. Mitchell Weissman Esquire representing owners of uh, that addresses, representing a variance resulting from a violation of 310 CMR 15.211 to allow an existing subsurface disposal to be located outside the property it services. Okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> okay, well, let me try and, try and put this together for you. So I gave you just right now this Area. Are you Mitchell Weissman? Oh, yes, okay. he's Mitchell, yes. and um, the owner of 712 is to your right, and the owner of 724 is to your left. So, Sharpness Pond Road has some interesting shaped lots. Um, this is down towards Forest Street, just before the corner of the Forest Street. There's a number of lots that are very oddly shaped, and that's based on how the developer cut it up. No, there were whatever rules had to do with contiguous space and wetlands and such to get their maximum number of houses. So what you have, and the one that's um, highlighted, the, the yellow is the actual, this was the actual original um, lot shape for 724 Sharpness Pond. To just below it, if you have it, upright is 712 as you can see below it and it, in very light you can see the there that's that the lot line, line right for the, that the light yellow there's a light yellow line down below right so down there um, the house of 724 um, is 
there's wetlands behind it, there's wetlands in front of it. Um, obviously what happened, and I shouldn't say obviously, I can assume what happened when they went to divide these up, they didn't want to give up this lot. And they put this jog in behind the house of 712 and put the septic system directly behind 712 as well as 712 septic system is there as well. They're not necessarily right exactly next to each other, but they're both in this backyard. So they're both in this little cutout square? No, the one is in that square. The one for 724 is in that square. The one for 712 is outside of that square in that person's backyard, almost near it. So you would have... Yep. Is that in our, those yeah. plans are in our... Yeah, the... So we're looking at sort of like that, right. according to this picture here. So the septic system for 712 is here, the septic system for 724 is here. This is how it originally was. Somewhere in certain time. Can you hear that reverb? It's really bothering me. It's reverberating. It's like echoing. Uh, no? Can you hear it? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, really, hear it. it's killing me. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I'll we'll stand back. Um, someone decided that they didn't like this jog and they wanted to draw a straight line. So if you see this paper here, instead of two lots, if you note, there's a lot 11, 12, 13, and 14. Someone could change two lots into four. You should have that one in it. the extra ones are I think that's the one you have right there, Larry. This one so you see the numbers 11, 12, 13, and 14? Found it. Okay, so 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now that's a straight line. So what they did was the neighbors decided they'd rather a straight line instead of a jog. So now they swap properties. 12 now goes with 13, and you see the line, and 11 goes with 14. What, but if you put your hand over it, then you realize the septic system for this property is now on the other on, gentleman's On the prior, property. on 712. Right. So, Mitchell came in at some point after this. He did not do this original. This was done, if you can see, this is 1998. This was done in 98. So now the property for 724 does not have a septic system on its property serving the home, and that's the violation. And to there's no place where it can go, is that it? Correct. There was never a place. There was never a place. That's why they did that drug. There was never a place for it. So but that so, is but, not going to move. It's going that to remain where it is. But that system is compliant. It's working. Right. It's Title fives have been done on both. Mm -hmm. They are both actually in very good condition. Um, so at the moment, but of course they are getting older. So consideration to what happens uh, when it, one does fail, when 724 does fail in hopefully another 25 years, uh, what would happen? But that consideration was thought of before anyway because no matter what, it's in the backyard of 712. Depending who owns it is our issue right now. So the issue right now is the owner of 724 is in non-compliance. Not the owner of 712. 712 has a septic system that serves he its property. He has two. <laughs> well, he only has one. There's two in his yard. Yeah. 724 does not have a septic system on his property. So that requires that the health department grant a variance to allow that. Of course, it should have been asked for prior to the change of these lot lines. Which was that one? 1998. The change of the lot lines was 98? Yes. Okay. And why are we just So then how many years ago did, was, did you come up with your, you entered the season the I, se I about eight you years know, ago, I, seven I years ago? represented uh, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Lezzo who did Right. So when we did our closing, we had no knowledge of any of these things having gone on about mm -hmm. 
it was then they discovered that, for make a very long story short, that their backyard belonged to the owner of 724, and the front yard of 724 <coughs> belonged to 712. So we did a land swap back in, uh, just make sure I have the year correct, 2009. Right, and we did it was a land swap recorded. to get us to 12 and 13 traveling together um, and 11 and 14 traveling together. Okay? So, and so that then Mr. Luzzo discovered the septic system issue. Again, we had no knowledge of that because right. we had no way of knowing that. So, what we did at that time back in back in 2010 is we did, we created a septic system leaching field easement mm -hmm. that granted, allowed uh, 712, allowed 724 to access 712 to, to if necessary, to uh, uh, service his leaching field, okay? Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. um, Frankly, and Susan and I have talked about this, we simply didn't know that there was a health department component to granting that easement back in 2010. Then this gentleman goes to um, sell his house, which he's in the process of doing. Which is why and, we're here today. And that's how he we find out sell his house that there's a home. missing <laughs> component, which is you folks, that we needed to get a variance from you as well. And hence, we're here. So I think we've complied with the requirements to get us here by each of these folks having Title V examinations done of their property. Um, and we need you find folks, if you will, to bring us the variance so that this gentleman can access his leaching field on this gentleman's property. I hopefully haven't messed this up if I explain that to you. <laughs> right. So is it our Good. business that, I mean, obviously now that this is public, this is, has to be disclosed, disclosed to the uh, buyer. Correct. Right. Yes. And, and it is, has been. Yeah. And, 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 and there is a buyer, actually. Yeah, and there is a buyer, and yeah. the, the understanding is, is that there is this easement and that there's a leaching field and that they cannot use that property for things that they might want to use that property. Correct. They can't park a truck on it, put a trailer on it. They can't put a swimming pool in it. Correct. There. Yeah. Dig, they, dig into the ground or Dig into the like ground that. or disturb the ground or things and of that prior nature. Prior to knowledge, unfortunately, a swing of playset was placed over part of the septic system. And, and just to add, yeah. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Lizzo are, are oh God willing, selling their property on December mm -hmm. 31st, and the swing set is going with them. So okay. that will be disappearing in 40 days. And there is a iron fence that goes over it as well. Um, this. That um, shows you the depiction of the, this is from the Title V. So there's an iron fence here, septic system. It is very deep, according to the installer. You had to go quite deep to get to this distribution box. So it's more than likely they did The septic is very deep, not the yeah, fence. Yes, the septic. So it's likely they didn't even know when they, I mean, to put in that kind of a fence, po I mean, it's an iron fence. It's not like a big, it's probably just a, it's a post yeah, bigger, yeah. just about that Right. So, I mean, it, and the playground is right there, which I'm sure probably the same thing, probably went, you know, putting in the post to swing set. Or, right. So taking it off, of course, they have to be very careful. It sits, it sits um, and then, the swing set just sits. Oh, it's just sitting? It's not yeah, dug it's in not, at all? It's not okay. okay. And so, so I reviewed it all. I read it the easement again today. And my only concern was in the easement, it had a phrase that said that um, they would be required to return the site back to its original state. It's the la the fourth paragraph there, that one there. Um, returning, and it says, returning any disturbed soil landscaping to its original state within a reasonable time thereafter. So if the septic system fails on 724, they are allowed by easement to replace it. But they're 
stating it's going to return to its original state. We can't say that right now. We don't know what a soil test would bring or what type of system they would need. It could be a raised system. We don't know that. So I think for a homeowner of 712 to have a full expectation that that flat yard is going to remain a flat yard, they have to understand it may not. And that iron fence may have to be removed. You don't know until it happens. It's possible it'll be exactly the same way, but when you go, this was 20 whatever years ago, and now we use soils a different way, we call water tables differently, so I don't want either of them to have an expectation. They have to understand that the septic system will have to comply by the t Title V that's in force at that time, that's up the subsurface disposal regulation. So you're saying if this fails, they'll excavate it, and likely this will still be the only place where it could go? I don't you're know that for sure, but it may not look the same. It may not be flat. Um, it might be raised. Or, right. or they might be able to pull it off. It'll be up to the engineer at that time, but it all depends. You see, it's all wet here. So conservation is not apt to just let them come over close to the wetlands. So, so, so just tell me again, so what are you, what are you saying? So, so, I, so, I, so th these, me these meeting minutes will be public if they want to discover that. Right, well, what I was thinking is in a decision, if, if you were leaning towards approving this, which is my recommendation to approve the variance, that we also um, indicate that um, the owner of 712 is not allowed to alter that area because we really can't like designate it. We can't put stones around it and say don't, you know, <laughs> it's part of the yard. But we, they need to know. It has to be written somewhere. You're not allowed to alter that area. They're not allowed to put a permanent structure over that area. So no sheds, no things like that. And there should be just grass. It shouldn't be a, a garden. <laughs> it shouldn't be, you know, uh, no, no uh, bushes, things like that. Um, and that there shouldn't be a, a full expectation. The expectation is that any system will be replaced, will comply with Title V, with, you know, subsurface disposal rate regulations at that time. There's no act, I can't say to them, this will be returned to its original state. Because then the person in 712 could be highly disappointed <laughs> if it doesn't look the same. Right. And they have something to say about that. And so what you're they saying can't is push that this board of health. You must give us a bit, because that says it has to be the original state. So, so what you're saying is so. that 712, even though they own that and it's somebody else's septic system, mm -hmm. it's got to be grass. They can't put anything on it, and they got to mow it and maintain it. They don't have to mow it if they want to, but <laughs> they want to. It's inside the, you know, the fence there. Right. It just, you just can't use it. It's not a usable place. You can't put anything on it. It has to do exactly what they would do on their own septic system. <laughs> they have to, you know, give that same care to the other septic system. Should, should this easement that's here, is that mm -hmm. prohibiting us from doing anything? That, uh, <clears throat> return any disturbed soil or landscaping to its original state within a reason if period we, of time? I mean, should that not be in there? Well, We're going to be contra contradicting. So we have a legal easement that makes these statements. If we, as the Board of Health, put in a decision that states that, that it's, it's not reasonable, that stipulation is not reasonable, we can't guarantee that. You can only guarantee that it can comply with the local re with the state and local regulations. I would suggest that the Board of How? Health's opinion trumps any agreement okay. between the two parties. Okay. So any That's my what I'm thinking in my head in the past is we've, we've seen agreements or even stipulations by the board like that that have been issued, but I'll say the problem is that things like this get filed with the deed, and when years down the road somebody goes to s sell it, it happens just like what you said. Mm -hmm. They go and they pull and there's a deed and it has this easement on it, mm -hmm. but okay. nobody's attached this Board of Health's decision to that deed. Well, we can do that. Question, that's so can we... Do you typically uh, you ask that the variance, if you were to grant one, be recorded or registered at the Registry of Deeds? If it's something we feel is necessary, like because you if granted you, a well. Uh, if you were the, to yeah. do that, yeah. we could effectuate it being registered. Yes. And then it's the onus is on the, the, part, the party, because 
I, I suggest to you that what anything you do I, yes. trumps their agreement. I, I guess that's kind of that what I was driving at, because yes. I've been here long enough to have seen some yeah, decisions I, like this from the past that the, the broker, good, bad, or indifferent, they just mm -hmm. don't know about this yeah, so board's we've been decision. operating on full disclosure with the, the new buyer here, mm -hmm. so there's no, there's no hidden agenda here, so, and I would have no problem if, if this is your decision to, rec to register the, um, the variance, and then everybody knows Great. what the rules are. That, that's exactly what I think is should Yep. And a theoretical question, Susan. So the 724 lot line is still basically outlined in the yellow now, except kind of cut off here? It, um, it or does goes it from here down here. So it's like along this picture that iron as part of that line, mm -hmm. if you just drew it straight. So but this top part here is still the same. That's another, yeah, that's, that's exactly the same. Yes. Yeah, so as best as we could tell it's right here. from yeah. what we can see in the wetlands and so on, this is really the only spot, I know we can't mm -hmm. be certain of that, but really where there could be a septic system for 724. But in the future, if and when that system fails, it may or may not be a flat system because we just don't know. And the engineer at that point would be a repair. Um, they would propose whatever, you know, variances or local upgrades that would need to make it the best they could possibly be. That's, they absolutely would make it the best they could. But we just, it's not realistic to expect it to be exactly the same. And that's why it was owned <laughs> separately. You know, it's a separate ownership. It doesn't make sense when you look out your back window and someone else is there, but that's how it was first drawn up. So, so this is very uncommon. Um, we, we've never uh, granted someone uh, to have one on a separate lot, except in one case where they were proposing a shared system and the owners didn't want shared, so they wanted two. So we had two on the same lot. So it's only been once in the 20 years I've been here that we've allowed this variance I, prior I, to construction. Excuse me, I would just add one comment. Unfortunately, we inherited this, right. and that was we're trying to, trying to make the best of a situation that Correct. we can't undo. And this was before either of these gentlemen and their wives yeah. owned these properties. So this was not. This was something we discovered and are trying to fix. Right. We're just trying right. to fix it with you. Absolutely. And that's I get why that. I thought it was. And I appreciate. Important. And I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. That's why I thought it was important. Both homeowners were here, so you you saw that they were both in support of this particular um, decision, um, since it affects them both. Um, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, your counsel for seven. Um, 712. Well, I, I, we've, because we have a joint interest, I've been working with uh, this gentleman's, I don't even know if I shouldn't interrupt you because I don't even know where you're going with that, but I've been, I've been op I think you know, but on, on, um, uh, for Mr. Stinson as well on, for this purpose. So you're a party in this, you're 724. Do you have anything to say to us about what we're talking about so that you don't go home mad? I, don't want, <laughs> I mean, to put it bluntly, or. or you're cooperative in this matter because I have no objections uh, to the variance, and uh, my only um, complaint or concern is I've yet to receive anything from the town, the board of health of the town, saying I was out of compliance. My only uh, notification was from Mr. Luzzo, who gave me a copy of the letter you guys sent to his attorney. I've the letter was sent. Now. The letter was sent. Was never returned. So. We don't know where who picked it up, but we sent it, and that's considered delivered as far as we're concerned. But you had it, so I figured that I didn't need to reset well, so it. Once we received it, yeah. we, we made but sure was, that everybody It was sent. Knew. It was sent to him, yeah. So, so it was not intended for it not to go there. Of course, we certainly wanted everyone to be notified. Yeah. And if they had a... Uh, change the system or fix it, what happens to the iron fence at that uh, point where they'd have to go I, through? I, I would suppose that uh, the the next owner, if that would be, had the unfortunate uh, obligation to be to fulfill your requirements to remove or replace or whatever, at least be temporarily, or actually would be permanently at that point, the, uh, the fence. That would be their obligation. They don't have a choice because whatever you say goes. 
put a giant gate back there. <laughs> let me uh, let me propose a uh, motion then. There's some. If you don't want to start from scratch, I just have some motions on motion language started, at least for this one. So. I didn't get the to pass it off to the people. Oh, we all, we all no, have this I in just, the packet? Or? No, no, I, just, I wrote that tonight, oh. and I just sent oh. it to this you. Is, so this is a proposed variance here? Motion. A suggested. Somewhere. You can certainly change it any way you want. It's just, because it, please write it <laughs> for Lisa, it's going to get already here now. Seven twelve is responsible to maintain the air. So lot twelve is for all intents and purposes this little jog out here. How far away are the two systems um, from each other? I'd say it is so there. It's just the leaching trench of his system that's on my property mm -hmm. and the D box. Okay. His, his tank is on his property. So the leaching fields, I'm, if I had to approximate, this is maybe right. they're, they run parallel, but they're 50 feet apart, 60 feet apart. Place them at one. Yeah. In case of a system failure. They're 60 feet in length, but sure. just say existed. apart, they're probably somewhere around that same length. Okay, thank you. Same distance. Does uh, Lisa have this language? Um, no, not yet. In case of a system failure, the owner of 724 should comply with the state code. The, desi the desires, you feel free to the desires of the <laughs> owner cannot. I was trying to say what the owner of 712 wants it can't be based on what they want. It's going to be based on the code, I guess. It's and it will be in their best interest, no doubt. Their neighbors. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I, mean, I don't know that you need to say that. So, okay, I think that's so a little redundant. The owner of 724 Sharpner shall yeah. comply with the state code um, yeah. in in uh, regards to the code of, of system of um, septic, Title V, and our local regulations. In effect, saying and then we can say um, just cross the what the area will be. This installation, this um, this uh, installation of a septic system uh, cannot assure that the area will be um, help me out it exactly the same afterwards as before. Is which is do you have the easement right there? I mean. Yeah. In essence, we have to say Church we can't yeah. guarantee that that sentence in the easement will it be able returned, to be met. It will be returned in its, its original state. It may vary in topography and design. That That's says a good one. it all. May, and it's a may. You know. It may vary in. Well, it, just say it may not be able to be returned to its original state, period. Okay. And, and that leaves, sure. again, sort of the. Um, Title V and the local regulations have to supersede that, and I, th I think I think that that's our intent. I mean, the regulations yeah. exceed it whether we say it or not. And you may not want to write all the stuff about don't do this or don't do that. You could just I mean, put, that, must that, comply with that's you know the septic regulations. Yeah. Current Title V local code and best right. practices for installation. What else? What else is there? Yeah, this part too, maybe there's a little too much here. Oh, in yeah. case of a system failure requiring replacement of the leaching area, the owner of 724 Sharpener shall comply in all, in all, in all matters with state code as well as local, uh, we can quote our local regulation. And that's, that's kind of saying we can't, we can't guarantee that if and when it has to be replaced that the original state will take precedent. Is that? 
briefing. Right. I, I, I had simple language. That yeah. Just it's said. Simple. Make it simple. It's basically, fine. allow the existing subsurface disposal system to be located outside the property with the condition that the variance be recorded with the registry of deeds yeah. and with the stipulation that any repair or replacement must comply with law and regulation at the time of the repair or, regu of the repair or replacement. Right. And may be different from the original. I, I, I just comply with the, comply with the yeah. law. Okay. It's, 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 it's let's not let's not add let's not right, anticipate correct. Martians landing on this thing. And truly, if that's true, if the owner of 724 sees the owner of 712 doing something on top of a septic system, he'll let us know. <laughs> so you know, if they have to agree. I mean, if he sees them out there digging in a septic system, right. he's going to tell me he can't do that. So why do we, we don't have to reiterate it. It right. just is. It's their responsibility. That's it. Shall I read this for the record? Sure. And yeah, just circle whatever you want. So, uh, just so are, are we replacing part of this, or we no, just? He, he's just, just going with the simple language. Okay. I'm just going with simple just language. Right. I mean, that that's a very long. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, well, it, it anticipates a lot of things that I don't think we need to get into. We don't need to get into the weeds on this. Okay. All right. So, I am going to move that. A variance. to allow an existing subsurface disposal system to be located outside of the property it services mm -hmm. with the condition that the variance be recorded with the register of deeds and with the stipulation that any repair or replacement must comply with the laws and regulation at the time of that repair or replacement. My computer locked up. So. Which had to be I got seven. only half of that. And you can add the address 712. Uh, we have to get the address. Uh -oh. I wasn't down to the table. Okay, yeah, well, no, it, was, it, it was nice and it's regarding slow. Regarding the we're giving the variance to 724. 724. Yeah, we can live. Yeah. I'll listen down to the Yes, table. the variance is 724. Okay. The only edit I would suggest to that is that you indicate where it's going because when you say outside of the outside of the outside of the um, its lot lines, you want you want to be very specific to this. You don't want to say outside of its well, lot lines. Outside of he could maybe go over here. We want to indicate that this is allowable at this point, but not that if it fails he could go here or here. Well, he'd be in violation of our code again. Do we need to anticipate that? I, I don't know. I don't think we need to. Uh, Ed, do we need to anticipate that he might go over somebody else's lot line? I mean, I suppose you well, could say number 12. Where the system yeah, I think we're being specific something. to what we're allowing. It's on, All right, on so lot number 12. Mm -hmm. uh, on lot number 12 only. No, not to uh, see the boundaries of lot. They're not going to let it happen anyway. They're not going to go through. They're not going to let it get that far. Yeah. No. It's not yeah. going to go through. Yeah, I, I, again, I think we're, yeah. we're, we're anticipating Martians landing on this thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So why don't we say uh, just simply that uh, this, this variance applies to the property of 724 and its uh, easement with 712. Yeah, because that easement is still in effect. Should this be registered yeah. on both 712? Yes. And I th is the easement to... filed with both yeah. properties? Uh, we would, we would re it's, this is registered land as opposed to unregistered land for whatever that's worth to you. But we yeah, just, I didn't know it, that. It, we, will, it, it will, we will reference both properties. It should be registered. Yeah. Our decision should It'll, be registered. It will show up on both certificates also, yes. of title, which is that's what, what we, we want. want. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we want. I would, I would only ask, Susan, that the final copy be in recordable form so it's going to be not the e variance is going to be notarized because they won't take it. You probably already know that, but the registry won't take it if it's not a notarized document. Okay. okay. We will do that. Thank does you. That, does that take care of this fairly for all parties? Feel free to us? happy. <laughs> Makes me happy. Homeowners? Everybody? Yes. Yes. All good? Yeah. All right. So we're, we're <laughs> happy. We're happy with this product. I will <laughs> second your motion. Again. All right. Product. Okay. It's, it's been an adventure. Fine product. Fine product. <laughs> 
we you guys have written down that. Climb, but we made it. The we audio. It's, it's on. Okay. It's on the audio. Yeah. Very clean So we'll be able concise. to get it yes. spoken clearly. Yes, you did. You spoke okay. Very clearly. All right. So All those in no favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Put that separate test on somebody else's property. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I, I wouldn't say I've seen stranger <laughs> things. <laughs> Someday. Someday. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was interesting. Oh. Well, we had two wells on the property before. Well, if they hadn't split it into four, then they would have been in violation of the planning the subdivision regs. And at first we thought that had happened. And then we realized the two became four and then there was a land swap. They didn't change a lot line. It's very, very strange. So, but um, I checked with planning. They were not in violation. But he thought they were at first. At first he said, oh, this isn't even legal. <laughs> and then they realized that it wasn't a change of a lot line. Because a lot line has a whole different requirements. So they did a land swap <laughs> instead of a lot line change. Very um, hmm. legal. Weird one. Wow. It, it was it was weird, and it's uh, we do have these um, where someone looks out their front door and sees someone else's septic system just off their front. And um, so, if you ever see a, a wrought iron fence or something go right in front of someone's house, it's probably because beyond that is someone else's property because of the d developer who drew that lot line that way. And it but was it legal. It was a pretty strange lot line. Huh? It was totally it's, legal. It's bizarre. Okay, what do we have okay. left? Okay, um, uh, we can go to approval of minutes. I sent back some edits of the July, September, and October. It looked like everybody had seen those. Get my edit. I've seen them. Read them. Um, so we'll take. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept the July 2014 minutes. Okay, a motion to accept the July. 24th, 2014 minutes. Second. So we'll do each minute separately then. Or we can yeah. do them all together, because I have multiple minutes. Just do one at a time. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, entertain a motion for September minutes. Make a motion to, uh, to uh, accept the September 29th, 2014 Board of Health meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion for the October minutes. Make a motion that the Meeting minutes for October 23rd, 2014, North Andover Board of Health be accepted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. <laughs> I wasn't here. <laughs> okay. But we did get a quorum on that, so. You okay. did. You got three. Um, I, I think I can do this under old business. Um, when we, uh, a couple months ago, voted on the new regulations for um, smoking and cigarette sales. Uh, we approved the regulation, but we didn't have the final form before us to sign that. So we now have before us tonight um, a version that can be signed uh, primarily only in terms of cleanup of numbering of paragraphs and clauses and so on, making everything kind of flow together in, um, in order. There, there were no substantial changes. This was circulated around in advance. And we're not taking a vote tonight. I'm um, just asking if there are any objections. And if not, I will sign off on this regulation. Then while that's going around, we have before us the 2015 Board of Health meeting agenda. Are we going to date these? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Today's November 20th. Yes. So, do we have any conflicts with those um, dates? Well, I won't be able to make the January date because I'll be in a meeting in Boston. But other than that's. One thing uh, we were thinking of doing in January, um, this 
kind of ties into the Ebola conversation, but uh, one thing that came out of that is that we wanted to connect with assisted livings and, you know, Doctors Express and things like that with about procedures on when they have communicable diseases, patients with communicable diseases or possibilities, how their policies and procedures are set to pr so that the EMS and such are protected properly. So Deborah was working with um, just an urgent. officer from the fire department and they suggested <laughs> inviting the Ashland Farms, Doctors Express, all the all the of them here, and having kind of an open uh, forum and discuss um, not just a Ebola, but in general, you know, their policies and procedures and how That's they uh, they can work together with the fire department and the EMS. Uh, and he just they decided they thought maybe January would be a good time. Uh, it would be good just to show you know to have a discussion in front of the public and talk about. You know how how we work together, but how we also have to protect each other. And you know, lots of times, that EMS has to show up somewhere, and there aren't proper procedures, and they they just we just want to kind of get a little more cohesive. So I don't know if you want to be part of that. Maybe we should hold it off until February. Or um, I'm up up to the favor of the board. I'm. Yeah. Well, what would you think about if you're going to do something like that, fairly broad scope, um, ask somebody from one of the local hospitals also? That may be on their list. I don't have the complete list. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, I mean, that would be good too. Because a lot of it came out of the Ebola talks, of course, it talked about well, what, what do you do with the ambulance? Does it come out of service after, you know, um, where to transport? Yeah, so there's been a lot of conversation. So yes, the local hospital could be in, invited. I don't know if they're going to invite every doctor's office, but I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of in their plan. They were trying to do it for tonight. I was like, they never get it together. <laughs> it's too soon. It was well, this is being ago. run by us. This is yeah. who's who's the moderator of this? Well, Debbie is working um, with Barry Sullivan. With the, the fire, fire department. department. Okay. So they would they are looking to facilitate this conversation um, on behalf of. You know the town and just the emergency response teams, even police or fire, you know, to to local locations. It's just something we're trying to do is get everybody prepared and on the same page. I guess that's probably what Barry said. I want everybody to know what we expect of them, and they want they can tell us what they expect of us. And they just thought it would be good to use utilize the board of health time to do such a thing. Well, as you start working on things, you want to maybe see what schedule seems to work best overall for sure. as many parties as possible. And when we get a complete list, we'll you know, send it off to you and, and what, maybe what the scope of the conversation is so you okay. can see what, what it is they want to accomplish. January. I mean, depending if it's, if it's very broad, I mean, sometimes there's some things to do in January. It may be, may validate a separate meeting if. I'll see what they expect for time. And we actually, we thought about doing it prior and not even having it, you know, kind of just a forum with whoever wanted to come and if one board member could come or two, you know, it's just, but that didn't work either for some people, so that's why we put it on. So yeah, we could do a separate time and just have a separate forum. Well, I, I guess we'll sort of see how it goes as things come together. Okay. Sounds good. So I don't have to talk about it all anymore. <laughs> um, so this is just informational only. We don't need to take any vote on that. Right. My only last thing, I just can tell you, permit season is um, off and running. Um, Lisa's doing a wonderful job. There isn't a day that she doesn't make sure whatever mail comes in gets out. So that's it's very smooth, but time consuming. Um, our, we sent out over 400 renewals, and they were basically due back the 15th of November. These truck permits, food permits? This is everything. Everything. Yes. All um, permits. Septic installer's license. Um, 
food. Except cigarette sales. Yeah, no, not cigarettes. <laughs> and not not camps business. and not you know it's all the other. Not swimming things. pools. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not anything that, but that. Yeah. You're right. Um, septic inspectors, septic installers, um, dumpsters, awful, awful haulers. Um, yeah. So there's sun over tanning. sun tanning. Tattoo. Tattoo. If we have one. I don't know if we've got one, one um, permanent makeup. Yeah. yeah. So, so you did the pro about three years ago, we started the process. Of, instead yeah. of sending the whole application out, we sent out a postcard, a right. colored postcard? or Yeah, we've, we keep changing it to, to figure out um, the best way. The postcard, we, last year we, we were changing because we were trying to do online payment, so we needed to do some mailings rather than just the postcard this year. I think you went back to the. A lot of people said they didn't receive the postcard because maybe it was little and got stuck like in things. <laughs> There's always something. We realize the human touch is really the only way to get people to pay and the double fee, which leads me to my next thing. So we require, so out of the 400, 293 are still pending, only 153 paid by the, the requested date. And the, it, we basically say it's requested so it gives us time to process. But to be honest, the, the law, say, with the food, says a renewal application shall be submitted 30 days prior to it expires. Not the day prior to it expires, which is what we've always allowed people to do. But what happens is then December 29th, I'm calling people saying, do you really want to pay double? Do you really want to pay? And this is a holiday time. And really, it should be. On December 1st, I should be doing that. I should be saying at December 1st, if you don't come down today, it's going to be double. Yes, I know it doesn't expire till the 30th, but you are required to pay 30 not, uh, to renew 30 days prior. And we were just throwing around the idea, trying to figure out instead of a double fee after the last day. I mean, truly, once you have no permit, there shouldn't be just a double fee. You should be not having permit. You, should be <laughs> you shouldn't be operating. Because in Andover, they walk out on December 2nd, second and shut people down who hadn't paid. And that's not what we want to do. But So if we, we crush everything into the end of the year, so if maybe if we stress December 1st and really work to get everyone paid by December 1st, there'll be very few that want to pay that double, you know. So it's just something, it is, um, this isn't ask for a vote or anything tonight or on change in policy, but it just shows you that it doesn't matter what we do. This is going to be in, ended up with phone calls all December long trying to get people to can they Can they do any of this so. online? We've got such a great online thing. I mean, they, you know, I pay my taxes online. I right. pay my water bill online. I can pay it and it, it gets credited the same day so yeah. if my taxes are due on November 2nd guess when I'm paying them we I'm piloted paying them on November 2nd we piloted it last year um, no one used it because um, those who used it is the reason is when you pay a bill for your water that's all you have to do is pay it we require an application we re require your service safe certificates we require your diagram of your dumpster area so no one pays online because they have to submit anyway so we literally had three, three people pay online out of 400, and there's a fee for us to do it. So um, it is a pilot. It was not worth it. It was not worth the conversation. It didn't work. And the town is moving that direction. Um, they're all in on a system that is going to happen. So we said we're not going to use be using the system we're using now. So why try and get people used to that one? Because there's a brand new system coming uh, that everyone, every town department is going to be able to use. But health was the only department in community development that even tried it. So we did try it. We did work with the company and had it all set up and no one wanted to use it because of everything else. So, so it will happen, but it's going to happen as a town as a whole. So we will be joining them and that's supposed to happen by the end of next year, 2015. So thank goodness. But you know, there's no way to pay with a credit card otherwise. I mean, we can't do that. You know, all that's going to happen. So and the town manager has made the long-term full commitment to bring us into the next level where this town needs to be. So. Thank you. 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 Thank
we're very happy about that. But so payment is one thing, but it's just the renewal time. It just really is, it's, it's a problem that every town has. What, so, so all the permits about. say you have, you're required to renew 30 days ahead or just the food? The one that I'm, that I'm very clear and sure on is the food. I haven't, I haven't pulled out all, a lot of them are local, we have local regulations for two or three things, so they're not, I don't think they're written that way. I think we just said, must be renewed by mm -hmm. the 31st. So but how the many food, food people, the regulations, food. how many food permits are in that 400? Well, how many? Hundred and Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So. so the so. food permit expires on December 31st. They can't sell food on January 1st. It is right. what it is. And we, we have not gone to that because it's been all about getting the double fee. I mean, it's not, not about the money, but that was the threat. We've not threat. That was the guarantee. You're going to pay double on December, on the 1st of January. We have never put it out there. It's just not been our so, so mode, of, our, our mode of you know enforcement. So I guess it's something that we have to really let people know ahead of time um, that this is the way it's going to be. Can, you know, can we do a two-year renewal? Do we have to do a one-year renewal? No, it's an annual. But does it, is that a law? Uh, the food code says it's oh, at food? 30 days prior to its annual. It does yeah. annual. It doesn't okay. have to be so that December. Is that state. That's code? state. Some some towns do. Their one year is from, they're doing them all year long, January, February, March. It's one year from when they open. Well, um, they rotating. like it because it just rotates because they have hundreds of them. Say like Methuen does it, hundreds. We've always just done it for January, December, just the way we are. So you can do, you can modify certain things. I don't think we can make it a two year though. Okay. Um, I could check into that. Just a thought. Um, But we're open to different ideas. Um, it, basically, I get my seniors, and they get on the phone, and they just call everybody over and over, and we keep track of every phone call. Um, <laughs> and, and there's nothing better than a senior calling, why haven't you paid your permit? <laughs> you know, they live here. <laughs> it's like, you know, oh, I'm getting, uh, you know, and they really are successful, <laughs> believe it or not, at getting people to pay for their yeah, but if you didn't have them, so if they didn't pay their permits and on January 1st, you said you have no permit. Right. Rather than a double fee, I mean, that really is a deterrent. I mean, to say you will be, you cannot operate on, you know, that would work for food, you know. But we haven't done that. We're, we're just... It's because you baby everybody. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, no, you want to make it as easy as possible well, yeah. for people we're to We're trying to, and the holiday time is just a horrible time. Because it's so, it's a profitable time. <laughs> Everybody's making money. They're all working well, hard. Well, we just changed the year to yeah. February first. Then, so you know, I'm, all these things, all these ideas. I mean, I'm all open for different ideas. Yeah, that's so, what I'm just thinking in my head. Is there a reason yeah. it has to be December 31st? I'm sh there may be a way that we can propose. I have to look to see what February first. Nobody does anything sure. in there's January. No, there's no reason we. I don't think there's a reason we could. Because I just told you, other people do a rotating one, so it has to be. I suppose you just have to make it your policy. That time. We've never, we haven't talked about that. I don't know. Well, you're not permitting summer camps in February. No, um, we do. Yeah, we have different ones. We have tobacco is a different time of year. Ice, uh, frozen desserts. Well, my suggestion uh, would make it something other than things. December 31st. Make it February 1st. Whether or not that would help, I don't know. That's a good question. What do you think? What do you think? I think it would help you. People, I think we're going to change it. We push it further yeah. because if you say yeah, yeah. this 30-day thing, that puts you on January 1. You're still mm -hmm. in the middle of March of the holidays. I, I, well, I'd say March 1st to get them right. over the holidays. Right. Then you start. You start the mail outs go out. You know, first week of January. And then that's January. the only thing that you're doing. So you know, you can use your winter months when things are. There's no no septic permits going in. There's, you know, there's there's not really much health-wise going on other than basically fires. Um, the other one that I know is difficult for Michelle. Fires, you said. Yeah, yeah. with houses go on fire in the winter. Just it's just the tra the trash. Old time oh, immemorial. Yeah. That's a planned thing in the, in the board of health. The trash Control trucks. Burn. The <laughs> trash trucks run on the annual, um, and they 
have the dates on there, you know, that there, that year. I don't know. I'd have to ask Michelle if she thought that would be a prudent thing to do to change trash trucks because they change. You know, they have to have their new stickers on January first. Well, then the year 2014 uh, carries into two months of well, 15. Yeah. I have a I have a yearly motorcycle registration yeah. sticker that is May 31st, mm -hmm. and the current one says 2014, so it's good until May 2015. The actually, police just know that. Yeah, actually, some of the um, some of the trash truck people have said to me, you know, putting stickers on in the cold is really difficult to get them to stick right, so they might like changing it to a later month, you know, a, a warmer month, you know, because that that could be something they might actually like, mm -hmm. you know, putting on instead of being out there in the dead of you know New Year's Eve, putting on stickers on their trucks. Um, so that could be something. That Yes, you're right. I, I like that idea, but I'd move it yeah. even a little further to get away from the holidays. You can send out applications right, right after the holidays. Well, we'll check. I'll right. check well, we're the not legal. taking a vote. This is yeah. just no, a no, discussion. No, no, I'll check the legal part of it, and, and we'll pull out all the regs and see how they're all written and whether or not they need, you know. I think that's a good idea because a lot of people are busy in December, and I, oh, I forgot I was busy for yeah. the holidays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really, though, they should have done it in November, so. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's true. It gets into our homes. Well, good. Thank you for your input, and we'll definitely kick around some ideas now that we know you all have some some good ideas. We appreciate that. We've tried a lot of different things through the years and haven't come up. I remember up, we I think Larry tried made it through the phone calls to the food yeah. places that were not just didn't renew, but were recalcitrant about it, right? Mm. No, yeah, remember they wouldn't maybe pay. Frank, we all called about three or four. Yeah. Food permit people that didn't renew. Maybe well, I know you had them come in front of you. <laughs> they came in front of you. That's for sure. <laughs> About the double fee thing. So. Oh, they did. I remember that. Yeah, yes. I remember that. But yeah, no, I appreciate your input, and this well, would be a different way of thinking. And they, they haven't a been new back before thinking. us in a few years. A new way of thinking. No, I, I know what you're saying. I, when I say Davium, I mean Frank. The Board of Medicine doesn't call you when you if you forgot to renew your license, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> No, they I don't. Mean, it's just this is life. This no, is I, reality. No, but it, it should also be easy to, for them to comply to. So yeah, that's my point. Right, and that's uh, so. They same. should have a. They should have a. They should have an easy way to mm -hmm. to meet the requirement, and that way everyone's happy. Yeah. So you don't have to vote on the um, new meeting agenda. No. no, that's just an informational item. Yeah. I mean, it's already set. Our our date and uh, this is just informational. So um, you all say uh, hope Joe's getting better. Joe isn't here and uh, hopefully he's feeling better. So you all should wave. Hopefully he's watching yeah. this live. Joe, feel better, yeah. buddy. He is, he is watching, I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, I'll, be, I'll get a call, I'm sure, tomorrow. Well, I'm eating a lot of candy and cake. <laughs>